Hello, it's me, Dick Jr. again. I'm coming to you today with Matthew chapter 22 uh, in continuation of what we've been doing. Um, I took two references this time. Uh, one to Ezekiel 21, 21 and one to 2 Samuel 23, verse 2. Um, I've already prayed and asked God to help me to speak with you. Um, I suggest that, that uh, before you put yourself in the Word, you pray and ask God to, to help you understand. Ask Him to fill you with the Spirit and uh, help you to understand, and He will. All right, I'm going to get started now. Um, in chapter 22, verse 1, Jesus spoke to them again in parables, saying, which is His normal practice, you know, uh, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding feast for his son, and he sent out his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding feast, and they were unwilling to come. Uh, again he sent out other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Behold, I have prepared my dinner. And he's talking about Jerusalem right here, basically. But uh, he's... he's uh, he says, My oxen and my fatted livestock are all butchered and everything is ready. Come to the wedding feast. But they paid no attention and went their way, one to his own farm and another to his business, which is what we today do. We, you know, scurry each one of us after our own thing. And, 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 and then sometimes, even in, in other ways, you know, we... we do that with our, you know, well, I'm a spiritual person, or I'm a, you know, we all seek our own paths, but none of those paths are the paths to salvation. I'll say that. So, uh, you know, we may find some semblance of happiness, but you're never going to find true joy, true joy that way, I'll say. Uh, and the rest seized his slaves and mistreated them and killed them. So the the person throwing the feast is God, okay? And the slaves are the prophets, which we have killed and tortured and things over the years, especially back uh, in Jerusalem. I haven't swallowed problems. That's why I keep looking down. Uh, but the king was enraged, and he sent his armies and destroyed those murderers and set their city on fire. Then he said to the slaves, The wedding is ready, but those who are, were invited were not worthy. And he's talking about Jerusalem. And he's talking about um, their synagogues and the temple and their priests and, you know, all these things. This is Jesus. Uh, and then verse 9, it says, Go therefore to the main highways, and as many as you find there, invite to the wedding feast. And uh, those slaves went out into the streets and gathered together all they found, both evil and good. And the wedding hall was filled with dinner guests. And I find it very interesting how Jesus said both evil and good. Because we're not supposed to go out there looking for righteous people to come join. We're supposed to go out there looking for whoever, you know, righteous or unrighteous, God chooses. Okay. <clears throat> and the wedding hall was filled with dinner guests. But the king... But when the king came in to look over the dinner guests, he saw a man there who was not dressed in wedding clothes. So he was not prepared for the wedding. See what I mean? Um, and by believing in Jesus Christ and uh, accepting salvation through him in the cross, uh, he clothes us, clothes us in white. He puts us in our best clothes. And we're ready for the wedding. You see what I mean? That's what this... But these are the words of Jesus as he's telling here. Uh, and he said to him, Friend, how did you come in here without wedding clothes? And the man was speechless. Then the king said to the servants, Bind him hand and foot and throw him into the outer darkness. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. And I want to repeat that for you again. Verse 14. For many are called, but few are chosen. Okay? God chooses us. See where I'm at? I got chihuahua problems. Um, God chooses us. Many of us are called, you know, and but uh, few are chosen. 
Then the Pharisees went and plotted together how they might trap him in what he said. And it was because he was he was so able to tell a parable that they knew was obviously about them without accusing them of doing anything. Um, and they sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians, which are Romans, basically, um, saying, Teacher, we know that you are thought, thought, truthful and teach the way of God in truth and defer to no one, for you are not partial to any. Tell us then, what do you think? Is it lawful to give a poll tax to Caesar or not? Uh, but Jesus, perceiving their malice, perceived their malice and said, Why are you testing me, you hypocrites? I, I stumbled there for a second, but uh, I was thinking back here. Uh, it says, uh, Is it lawful to give the poll tax? It says, Caesar was collecting tax at the church, I think. Because this comes up uh, a few chapters earlier, the poll tax. Um which Jesus would say, and he said then, no, this is not the way it goes. But Jesus perceived their malice and said, why are you testing me, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the poll tax. And they brought him a denarius, and he said to them, whose likeness and inscription is this? And they said to him, Caesar's. Then he said to them, then render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. And what he's saying right there was, you know, give Caesar the money he asks, and give God your heart like he asks, and your attention, and your love. See what I mean? All right, so, uh, and hearing this, they were amazed, and leaving him, they went away. So they weren't able to catch him uh, with those people and have the Romans come and arrest him, which is what they were trying to do. They are trying to get him to say, no, no, you don't have to pay the taxes. And in comes the Romans. Uh, on that day, some Sadducees, it's later the day, uh, who say there is no resurrection, and it's, there's two basic sects. There's Pharisees and Sadducees. And then underneath Pharisees and Sadducees, there's scribes underneath both of those, and disciples underneath both of those, and all of those. <clears throat> who say there is no resurrection, came to Jesus and questioned him, because they knew that Jesus believed in a resurrection, and as well as John, and uh, also uh, the Pharisees, of course. Uh, asking, teacher, who said... If a man dies having no children, his brother, uh, as next of kin, shall marry his wife and raise up children for his brother. That's Deuteronomy 25.5. We're not going to go there. And I, I know that it appears as well uh, in, in other places. So uh, Now there were seven brothers with us, which means they were alive here on earth. And the first married and died, and having no children, left his wife to his brother. So also the second and the third, down to the seventh. Last of all, the woman died. In the resurrection, therefore, whose wife of the seven will she be? For they all had married her. But Jesus answered and said to them, You are mistaken, not understanding the scriptures nor the power of God. And that's a bad thing for, for a man uh, uh, to not understand the scriptures if he's supposed to be trying to explain scriptures. That's, you know. Um, For in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are like angels in heaven. And he's talking about uh, the resurrection at the end uh, in Revelation, especially. It describes it very, very, uh, very well. But uh, uh, at that time, uh, if we're on the right path, if we're on the path that Jesus and God have set before us, uh, when the time comes, we're going to be there uh, in glory and light. Uh, and, uh, yeah, we're going to be like angels. So uh, let's go on. But uh, regarding the resurrection of the dead, have you not read uh, what was spoken to you by God? I am the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. He is not the God of the dead but the God of the living. And what he was saying is he said, I am the God, which means that Jacob, Isaac, and Abraham are still alive with him. <coughs> he didn't say I was the God, and then they died and they're gone. He's saying I am. <coughs> Excuse me. And when the crowds heard this, they were astonished at his teaching. 
But when the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, and it's the very same Pharisees who Jesus had silenced uh, from verse 15. Then the Pharisees went and plotted together how they might trap him, and they got the Herodians, and they came and they asked him about the poll tax of Caesar, and they went away amazed. And then the Sadducees tried, and uh, they went away. Uh, uh, astonished the crowds around and that's what Jesus did and then the Pharisees saw he astonished the Sadducees and he had already uh, astonished them and heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees they gathered themselves together one of them a lawyer which is a scribe uh, and <clears throat> a special kind of Pharisees or Sadducees um, asked him a question testing him teacher which is the great commandment in the law? And he's talking about the law of Moses or the Bible. Uh, and he said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. That is the greatest commandment. If you do this commandment, then you'll do what he says. And the rest of the commandments fall in line, but will continue. Okay. Uh, the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. If you do this, and then you do the first one, you're going to heaven as long as you believe that Jesus Christ is your Savior. Um, the Son of God, he's the Son of God, and he came for our salvation, but yes. Um, on these two things, on these two commandments depend the whole law and the prophets. Uh and neither one of those is the commandments from uh, uh, the ten. Um, now, while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them a question. What do you think about the Christ? Whose son is he? And he knew that people were saying that he was the Christ. Okay. And I don't... Well, they didn't know he was the son of David, for one thing. Uh they said to him, the son of David, uh, and he said to them, that how does David in the spirit call him Lord, saying, Lord, uh, saying, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I put my enemies beneath your feet. Uh, at this time, I'm going to take us to uh, um, Second Samuel 2, 23-2. Uh, but the reason is because it says the Spirit of the Lord spoke by me, which means that the Spirit of the Lord came into him and spoke by him. You see what I mean? Used him as a mouthpiece. And his word was on my tongue. Okay, so that's what he meant when he's talking about the Spirit. The Spirit came just like this, and out came the word. Okay, uh, <clears throat> if David then calls him Lord, how is he his son? Uh, which, you know, how do you call your own son Lord? Uh, <clears throat> no one was able to answer him a word, nor did anyone dare from that day on to ask him another question. And that's how that ends. Uh, until uh, the end. This is the beginning of the week. Okay, This is not the end of the week. And at this point, they've been asking him questions for three years every time they see him. So uh, that's what I have. I, I somehow didn't get back to Ezekiel. I'm going to find this uh, reference in here because uh, I didn't take you guys to Ezekiel. And there was a point in going there. Just got to find it. Ezekiel 20, 21, 21. Okay, so um, Matthew chapter 22, verse 9 okay, is where, where that reference is from. I didn't circle it in here uh, when I wrote it down. So um, go therefore to the main highways. Uh, and as many as you find there, invite to the wedding feast. This is where Jesus is talking about the wedding feast. But, uh, you know, there's, uh, I'm going to go back to this, this reference here to Ezekiel because uh, I want to explain, I want to just let this explain. So this is 2121. For the king of Babylon stands at the parting of the way at the head of the two ways to use divination. He shakes the arrows. He consults household idols. He looks at the liver. So, um, I'm showing you what the main path is, you know. And this is talking about 
divination and you know you could lump astrology you could lump you see what i mean anything that's not of god into that statement and uh so go therefore to the main highways go to the, anybody who believes anything you don't have to believe in god and invite them to the wedding come on in everybody's invited and both evil and good you see what i mean so that's that's the message of jesus christ uh um so that's all I have out of uh, the book of uh, Matthew, chapter 22. Thanks for watching me, and God bless.